Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, Principal Atmospheric Scientist at Nutrient Ag Solutions, and I want to thank you for watching this weekly Ag Weather Update brought to you by the Farm Credit Associations of North Carolina. Well, earlier this morning, we can see the outer rain bands of um, Tropical Storm Arthur impacting coastal regions of North Carolina. And all the way back on Friday, we started to watch a group of thunderstorms that were just south of Florida, between Florida and Cuba, that were going to emerge north of the Bahamas into a favorable environment for possibly strengthening into the first tropical system. And here it is. Uh, and good news is, is that Arthur is not really going to cause too much problems other than the increased threat of flooding right here along the coast as these rain bands slowly spin through that side of the state. But Arthur's forecast track from the National Hurricane Center is to stay offshore, at least the center of Arthur, and then move east and get away. So we still do have tropical storm warnings that are out for coastal areas of North Carolina. Uh, but outside of that, really, this is going to be primarily a rain threat. Now, something interesting about Arthur, Arthur having shown up yesterday on Sunday, uh, being the first named system of the year, kind of continues a long-standing trend going back to the 1970s, where the date of the first Atlantic named storm for, forming by, uh, by year here has basically gone down by about a month. So on average, the trend line, which runs right through here, says we're getting these systems about a month earlier. And certainly this year with the warm waters, not only in the Gulf, but also just off of the southeastern coast, uh, the conditions were, were quite right for this to develop. So this, again, just continues a longer-term trend. Now, before it got here, look, much of North Carolina spent the last week relatively dry. The heaviest rainfall stretch from parts of Texas through Oklahoma, then getting into Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, straight through Illinois up into Michigan, and now today the eastern Corn Belt's getting hammered with heavy rainfall. So if you are a corn and soybean farmer in North Carolina, take a look at what our fields look like, for example, in Illinois. After a round of strong storms yesterday over in East Central Illinois, this is some very, very productive ground in the mid part of the country. This is what much of the state of Illinois looks like right now, just covered with ponds from some of the heavy rainfall that we're hoping that water will get drained away very quickly. Now, where we added all that rainfall was on top of already saturated ground. You can see right in here. So this is just giving you kind of some perspective around the rest of the United States here, uh, looking at where we had uh, some heavy precipitation. Also, do note that right here on the back side of this, where things had been dry, we'd even seen an expansion of the drought uh, monitor and the D0 drought case getting out of Kansas now into parts of Nebraska and Iowa. Yes, we did bring in some meaningful rainfall, but no, it was not completely corrective on the drought issues there. You might be able to see that a little bit better by looking over the last 14 days. While here in North Carolina, getting into Virginia, things were relatively dry. Okay, remember we did have those severe storms that skirted just to the south here. Much of this part of the United States has been dry, and so has this section of the United States. And that includes getting up into Wisconsin here and northern Michigan. So I just want to keep you in perspective with how things are shaping up across the rest of the United States. Now, early this morning, again, we can see Arthur on radar here, again, uh, getting to about five o'clock in the morning here, East Coast time. But what I want you to be paying attention to is actually this system that you see spinning up over here. It turns out that is going to plague North Carolina for the rest of the week. And we're going to be talking about some very, very heavy rainfall coming in through there. So while today we have flood watches out for this area, Okay, flood warning here in Illinois and here in Michigan and our tropical storm warning here. We are going to be seeing flood watches and warnings show up in this whole area as we progress forward throughout this week's forecast. And here's the reason why. The flow pattern is highly amplified, deep trough out west, breaks over the top of this now cutoff low that's sitting here over parts of Illinois, for example. This is the flow pattern today on Tuesday. We'll take a look at how, excuse me, on Monday. Take a look at how the things look on Tuesday. Where did that low go? Basically here in the parts of Kentucky and Tennessee, just sitting and spinning like this. From Tuesday into Wednesday, it actually uh, basically just moves or stays stationary, honestly, moves a little bit to the north into parts of Kentucky. And then by the time we get out into Thursday, it just moves a little bit farther to the north North, up into parts of Indiana. In fact, this particular system even retrogrades a little bit, which means moves to the west. As a result of that pattern not breaking down to the end of the week, you're going to have chances for rain every day this week. And this is what it looks like when we just add it all up together. So the rain encroaching in on the Appalachians later today, and then I could just tell you you have about an 80 to 90% chance of rain every single day throughout the rest of this week until you get to Friday and into early Saturday. 
and as a result the rainfall is really going to be adding up so this particular animation is going to stop next sunday evening and if we zoom in here just take a look at how much total accumulated precipitation we're talking about well the farther west you go the potential for getting above four five or six inches of rain is high now will this model nail down the numbers perfectly no it won't it tells us just how much precipitable water is there though should it get rained out to really be producing some heavy, heavy precipitation amounts. I am expect, expecting major flood threat in the western two-thirds of the state of North Carolina throughout this week and today along the coast here as Arthur pulls on off to the open ocean. So look out for this. It's coming. Could it break by Memorial Day weekend? I think it will. Will there be any severe weather with this? Well, today on the 18th, chances of strong to severe storms in through here. We do have a marginal risk put out by the Storm Prediction Center. Tomorrow, just as the storms kind of roll through, you know, you'll hear a few rumbles of thunder, and the same thing goes through uh, in the day on, on Wednesday. The, the main flow pattern, this, this blocked pattern, this cutoff flow, like I said, doesn't break down for a while. So we're just going to see this pesky rain uh, for much of this upcoming week. Now take a look at this. This is the max wind speeds later on today on Monday. We can see that the, the main show is going to be Arthur just off the coast. As I take you though into the day on Tuesday, notice how our flow, so the low is here, our flow is coming in from the east. So we're going to be transporting moisture from this direction, remnant moisture from Arthur in that direction and it's just going to run up the slope here increasing our flooding threat so that's tuesday's winds and this is wednesday's and you can see just the same thing overall with this setup as we just watch this upper level trough just slowly meander in and around the eastern corn belt and parts of the mid-south before finally toward the end of the week coming over to the east coast so let's do an intermodal comparison on the left i have the gfs and on the right i have the european model let's get them both going here and take you back and show you what i mean so here we are throughout the day on Monday, we still have Arthur soaking parts of the east coast here of North Carolina. Well, Arthur will finally move out by the time we get into, this will now be valid a Monday afternoon and evening. So there it is offshore. And it's at that point that the rain really begins to work its way in from this more pesky cutoff loop. You can see it in both models here. All right. So how does it look? Well, let's just go from Monday night into Tuesday morning. Tuesday afternoon and evening, very windy conditions. As you can see, the isobars spaced tightly together in both models there, but also widely scattered rainfall. This is now getting into Wednesday morning, afternoon, and evening. Very, again, a, couple, a day here in the middle of the week, Wednesday, very heavy rainfall anticipated by both models. Continuing on from there, let's go to Thursday morning, afternoon, and evening. That upper level low is still sitting and spinning in that area. This pattern finally starts to break. This is Friday. Morning, afternoon, and evening, getting into Saturday. There it is. By the time we get to our weekend, our precipitation chances finally start to die off as the jet stream just opens back up the avenue for strong to severe storms at the end of the week in the midsection of the country while finally letting this system exit over here in the Carolinas. So you may get through the end of your weekend, really Saturday and mostly Sunday, finally dry, it looks like. Uh, for the most part and with some decent memorial day weather while the midsection of the country goes over toward the stronger to severe storms but it is certainly not a completely dry pattern as we look out this far both models in pretty good agreement through the next uh, six days or so so what's the difference beyond that well let me just show you how the end of the month is going to shape up this is the day 10 forecast which takes us out to may 28th i have the gfs over here on the left now, if we're looking for um, you know a, a much a more active pattern for the mid part of the country, this trough here sweeps through and it'll light up this whole area. All right, uh, the European much different, much farther to the north jet stream, which means warmer, and the trough is going to sit over parts of Texas, which means it's going to keep parts of the central United States. Well, really, that same quarter you just saw quite wet. So in both cases, though, look at this week two. So I got you all the way out here to Monday, June 1st from the GFS on the left and the European on the right. The, the GFS, remember, brought the trough in here, which kept this whole area active. But notice over here that it was going to be drier toward the coast and wetter toward the mountains. Well, the European had an entirely different scenario, right? It had that trough that was cut off down here, keeping this area very wet. But it almost has a very similar forecast for North Carolina, wetter toward the mountains and drier toward the coast. So it seems that this particular pattern 
whether it sets up the way the GFS says or the European, gives us a, a similar scenario for North Carolina, and that is one where the Appalachian Mountains are going to be wetter. Part of the you know the higher ground there, the farther west you go and across the state, uh, is going to be um, going to have a better chance of being wetter. Okay, from there, let's take a look at temperatures. So these are temperatures today on Monday. The color coding tells you departure for normal. So a lot of mid 70s across the state. As we play this through, you're going to see you have a cool week ahead of you. Look at that temperatures in the 60s. That's about 10 to 15 degrees cooler than average. As we get over to Wednesday, that's going to, probably going to be your coldest day here with maybe getting back uh, up to the higher elevations here with temperatures trying to get out of the 50s, which is just amazing here. In the day on Thursday, a lot of the same, upper 60s to lower 70s. But as I said, toward the end of the week, look, Friday into your Memorial Day weekend here, as the pattern starts to clear out for you, the temperatures go right back up into the 80s, and it's going to, I think, be a pretty decent upcoming Memorial Day weekend. All right. From there, let's just go look at the longer term patterns. I got the 6 to 10 day on the left uh, from the GFS and the same thing on the right from the European model. Overall, we see near average to slight warm bias during that time period. And as we stretch this out to the 11 to 15 day, which gets us all the way out to the beginning of June, again, um, temperatures across the state looking very close to normal. So at this point, uh, the models are not taking aim in on any sort of extreme heat stress even though it's going to be a little bit cooler than average as we work our way through the first four days of this week. Okay, so that's how things shape up looking longer term. As we go out beyond that, I want to take you over to this part of the world. Where are you? You're just north of Australia. And I'm going to talk about two things to piggyback off of what we talked about last time. These winds, those are our trade winds racing across the open Pacific. We're going to take a look at their strength and what that means in a few moments. And next, I want you to look right over here. This is a powerful tropical cyclone that's going through the Bay of Bengal. And what it is going to do is it's going to hit parts of eastern India and then go right into Bangladesh. Now, why I bring this up is for two reasons. The amount of total rainfall we're talking about getting out of this could be in the 6 to 15 inch rain uh, rainfall range here. And it's going to be hitting where the Ganges River, which comes in like this, and the Brahmapurta River comes in like that, creating the floodplain. It looks very much like the delta here, uh, the Mississippi River in the United States. Well, where that hits is a, is a nation, a country called Bangladesh. And just to let you know here, Bangladesh is about the size of my home state, Illinois, but it has about 140 million people. So I'm expecting major, major flooding out of this particular system. Meanwhile, if you come right over here, the Mayu front hits southern China hard. But when you think about where China grows a lot of its crops, just think about this. Where is cotton grown? Cotton is grown way over here in the interior part of, of, the, of the country of China. It's also grown in this area, but I've also enclosed where we grow corn and soybeans and other crops. Very dry in the forecast over the next week, but wet in north of the Korean Peninsula. And this is also some very productive ground. By the way, that X I put in there is where Beijing is located. So it's always good to know where Beijing is because go south of it and there's farm ground. To the west of Beijing, there's farm ground. And to the north and east, there's farm ground in China, okay? Next, remember how I told you to watch those trade winds? Take a look at this. The Southern Oscillation Index has been moving from negative territory up finally to where it has been sustained above average. So average is here. Now, why do we care about this? Well, if it is below minus seven, so down here, we're talking about full-blown, excuse me, El Nino conditions, El Nino, all right? If we come up here above seven, we're talking about La Nina conditions. And we've been moving farther and farther above that zero line over the last month. So right now, strong trade winds are in the forecast, which you just saw, and they're going to meet a westerly wind burst, and right in the middle there, just north of Australia, put out some quite a bit of precipitation. Now, why we talk about this is because we have seen, right in through here, cooler water emerge. Now, as we've been discussing, our forecast for this upcoming summer is going to hinge so much on how warm the North Pacific is compared to the Central Pacific. What I want everyone to be watching for is if we do see the waters in here cool off, that would make a significant change for our upcoming summer pattern and possibly lead toward more heat and drought stress later in the year. But if that doesn't happen, if the North Pacific stays on the warmer side of things, then that's an entirely different scenario in terms of our upcoming summer precipitation patterns. And in the last two videos, I've shown you the long range forecast for summer, which means which, which is looking currently to be quite wet. 
All right, quickly, Europe, just in case you want to keep an eye on what's going on in the Black Sea region. Here's the Black Sea. Whoops, let's color that in black. There's the Black Sea. And what we see here is that Ukraine, much of the western uh, part of Russia's wheat belt, is looking to be on the cooler side of things, maybe up to 8 or 9 degrees Celsius below average. While over here from the Iberian Peninsula through France getting up into the UK, they're going over to a much hotter pattern. It is dry through much of Europe, but again, the Black Sea is here. We see much closer to average precipitation around the Black Sea growing areas. And finally, to finish this up, if we talk about South America, where we're growing a lot of our safrina crop in through this area, both uh, corn and cotton. Right now, precipitation amounts look close to average, but remember, to be close to average at the end of the monsoon is relatively dry. The above average precipitation is really hammering parts of Paraguay, Uruguay, and southern Brazil's growing areas. But this is rain that is coming too late to make much of a difference. We are anticipating maybe a brief slowdown here in parts of Argentina with harvest, but otherwise, these precipitation patterns look favorable for what's going on in Argentina. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Hope you all have a great week. It's going to be a wet one. Make sure your umbrella functions and your windshield wipers are in good shape. Remember, turn around, don't drown. Please, I, I really want to eliminate the unnecessary fatalities we are getting from people who are trying to cross flooded roadways. With that, though, I'll stop right there. Thank you for your attention and have a great week.